You've probably seen them everywhere at the airport. Those little carry-on bags with wheels called rollerboard suitcases. However, I have a different name for them. Headache generators. The original two-wheel design can put strain on your shoulder and neck, so manufacturers fixed it with a slick new upgrade, the four-wheeled spinner. Problem solved. Well, not exactly. Now frequent travelers are trading neck pain for elbow injuries. So what's going on here? Why are we still fighting our luggage after all these years? Let's break down the math to find out. And at the end, I'll pitch my own design, one that optimizes weight distribution and avoids the hidden flaws of both the two-wheeled and four-wheeled versions. I get headaches about every time I fly, thanks in part to my suitcase. Dragging it behind me always put a surprising amount of strain on my hand, neck, and shoulders. These intense knots only further tightened as I sat still in a plane in seats that weren't made for someone who's 6'4", or 192 centimeters. Why was there so much strain on my body? Well, like any curious mathematician, I sat down to do the math and find out. The main question, how much weight is my hand actually supporting when I pull the suitcase? It turns out the handle length plays a big role, and the standard design puts your hand in one of the worst positions possible, maximizing the strain. To solve this problem, we will need the center of gravity of the suitcase and some trigonometry to calculate the force on my hand. Since I'm a pretty tall guy, my clothes are larger and it takes the entire suitcase packed to the brim to hold all my stuff for a trip. My suitcase was about 24 inches tall, or 61 centimeters, and about 10 inches thick, or about 25 centimeters. This is slightly taller and wider than most rollerboards, which I needed to fit all of my stuff. Assuming the density of what I packed is pretty constant, then the center of gravity of the suitcase will fall on the lines of symmetry. There is of course a little settling in my clothes, so let's say the center of gravity is 30 centimeters up and 12 centimeters from the front. One measure that was constant in the situation was the height of my hand. I would let the extended handle on the rollerboard fall into my hand that freely hung down. I measured that to be about 83 centimeters off of the floor. My packed suitcase often weighed about 25 pounds, or at a mass of about 11.4 kilograms. A force of 25 pounds is approximately 111 newtons in the metric system. So there's a force of 111 newtons here going directly towards the ground. That force is counteracted by the force applied from my arm holding up the suitcase by the handle. If I'm standing still holding the suitcase, these two forces have to be equal. They're equal because if they weren't, then the suitcase would be accelerating, but since it is still, the forces must be canceling each other out, assuming negligible friction. Archimedes explored a similar situation when he was trying to understand the science behind levers. He found that, that to get two weights to balance, one weight on each side of the fulcrum, then the weight of one times the distance it is from the fulcrum has to be equal to the weight of the second times its distance from the fulcrum. If the two forces were on the same side of the fulcrum, which is the case in our suitcase situation, since the wheels is the fulcrum, then they could balance only if one force was going in the opposite direction. But the calculation was the same. The forces times the respective distances had to be the same. This math is often called the law of the lever, or torque, or the math of moments. But we don't have a horizontal bar. We have a bar at an angle. And that changes things, but luckily we can generalize the idea using trigonometry. Instead of this equation for a horizontal bar, physicists use this equation where Q and H are the angles formed between the forces and the bar. Physicists usually write it with Fs instead of Ws to think of forces instead of weights. Since this situation uses a wheel as a fulcrum, we can solve it using torque, which is the twisting force on an object. The weight of the suitcase wants to twist the object around the wheel when it is not balanced, and the force on the hand holding the handle is applying a force in the opposite direction. The torque on the handle has to equal the torque of the suitcase at the center of gravity in order to stay stationary. That's why the two torques are assumed equal in our formula. Let's start on the right hand side, which is the formula for the torque of the handle. We're trying to find the force of the hand, so F is what we want to find. So let's call it Y. D sub 2 is the length of the bar, and that's what we want to change to see how it affects the force. So we will assign that our variable x. Next we need to find the angle h. My hand is 0.83 meters from the ground no matter how long the handle is. We can form a right triangle with lengths of the handle to the wheel, the height of my hand, and the horizontal distance from the wheel to my hand. All we need to find is h's supplementary angle j, and subtract that from 180 to find h. We know the hypotenuse, x, and the length of the adjacent side of angle j, 0.83. Using our friend Sokotoa helps us to see that j is equal to the arc cosine of 0.83 divided by x. Now we subtract that from 180 
and boom, we found H. And now we can write down an expression for the torque at the handle. That expression is right here. Next, we need the torque of the suitcase. Remember the formula for the torque is the force times the distance times the sine of the angle. We already know that the force going down is 111 newtons. The distance from the wheel to the center of gravity will just take some simple trig to find. We assume the location of the center of gravity is 0.3 meters up from the base and 0.12 in from the handle side. So the distance from the wheel to the center of gravity is found by the Pythagorean theorem. We can find the angle Q using some geometry and trig. In order to use trig, we need to know three parts of the triangle, but right now we only know one, this distance. So we are going to use some angle theorems. To start, let's look at some corresponding angles. Since the forces are straight up and straight down, they form parallel lines, which will make H and V corresponding angles. This means they have the same value, which is this expression with arc cosine. The corner of the suitcase forms a right angle, so we can use this to find G, since it's complementary to this angle here, which means they sum to 90 degrees. We can pull out our handy Sokotoa to find the arc tangent of 0.3 divided by 0.2, which equals 68.2 degrees, and then do a little calculation to find that G is 21.8. It's nice because G will never change with the length of the handle. V will change, but since it uses H, which also uses X, it will change with the length of the handle. Now we need to find the angle Q. The sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, so G plus V plus Q equals 180. Or, since we know V and Q, we can write that equation this way and just solve for Q. And there you have it. We now know enough to create a formula to find how the length of the handle will affect the force we exert. Bringing it all together, we have a force times a distance times the sine of an angle equals this force times this distance equals the sine of this angle. And as we solve for Y, we finally have our equation. This shows what I call the rollerboard headache curve. The rollerboard I used the most has a handle that's about 108 centimeters in length when extended. I used the curve to find the force on my hand with our assumptions. Well, no wonder it gives me a headache. That length of handle gets me darn close to the maximum possible force on my hand. It's as if designers tried to make it feel as heavy as possible when pulling them through airports. The force curve shows that adjusting the handle length affects how much weight your hand supports. If you shorten the handle so that the suitcase's center of gravity sits over the wheels, the force on your hand drops to zero. You can test this by raising your hand until your rollerboard balances, but walking like this is tough. The suitcase is very unstable, and small movements of your hand cause big force shifts. The steep slope of the curve near zero force hints at this instability. The derivative of the force curve at that point, when the handle links put the center of gravity over the wheel, is about 938 newtons per meter, or roughly 9.38 newtons per centimeter. This means a tiny hand movement while walking can add or subtract about two pounds of force. It's unpredictable and frustrating. I've tried it and the suitcase becomes very erratic. It pulls, twists, it'll even hit your leg. Lengthening the handle helps, but past 1.25 meters, the force decreases more slowly. At three meters, maybe around 10 feet, it's not even cut in half, but the strain does drop. The cost here is that such long handles might cause chaos with hundreds of people walking through airports. So what should we do? Well, my idea is to adapt four-wheeled rollerboards with a hinged handle mounted low near the wheels. Add a latch that can release the handle to fold forward and you can pull instead of push. Now most of the weight stays on the wheels and not your hand. And if this already exists, let me know. If it doesn't and you make a profit off this idea, just remember, I want 10%. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share our videos. Be sure to follow Math the World on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for your support.